Hi, Cliff Bray here. My wife bought my seven-year-old grandson this Jurassic World Gyrosphere RC, uh, the RC standing for remote control, um, just, uh, just yesterday. And comes with four main parts. There is this mechanism right here and the action figure that sits uh, inside of it. There is uh, two halves of the sphere itself and a remote control. And the way this goes together is that this mechanism will fit inside these two halves of the sphere and the remote control then will control it uh, where you can manipulate it and run it around the floor and, and play with it. But uh, uh, after my grandson had played with this for about four five hours uh, it developed a problem and I'll tell you about that here in uh, just a minute but let me first of all uh, put it all together and I'll be right back I have put the uh, mechanism inside the two halves of the sphere and uh, the way you do that is you line up this uh, black arrow here on top with this kind of a black triangle down here uh, with a clear part in the middle there and after you line them up, then you rotate them to where the two black triangles line up, and that kind of clicks it and locks it into place. And that's the problem. Uh, right after my son started using this, he noticed that as he would run this around the floor, especially if he bumped it into something, the two halves of the uh, sphere would, would come apart, and he would have to go pick it up and put it all back together again. As he continued to use it over several hours, with it still kind of coming apart and then him having to put it back together again, it kind of would wear down the uh, friction uh, uh, bond there between those two halves to where it just started coming apart uh, um, easier and easier each, each time. And I'll demonstrate uh, the situation that we're in now after only about uh, four hours of use on this uh, on and off over the last uh, day and a half. So here is the uh, gyrosphere on the floor. Those uh, two black arrows are lined up there, so it should be clicked into place pretty good. To use this, you just uh, use this bottom button to spin it like that. When you get it heading in the direction you want it to go in, you press the top button here, and it'll move in that direction. So we'll just uh, let it run around here a little bit. So, that was probably about uh, four or five good whacks. And you know, you can say, well, you ought to tell your kid, hey, don't run into things with it. Well, good luck with that. Uh, you know, clearly, there is a, a design uh, flaw here in how these two shells fit together and how they hold together, especially after it has come apart several times and you put it back together and you kind of warm the edges of that shell. Uh, but uh, let me show you real quick how to kind of fix this uh, problem because it is kind of irritating to a young child when they're playing with this and it keeps coming apart like this. If it's a very young child then you can expect them to you know be coming and grabbing you and saying hey come here you know put it back together for me again and now you're going to be getting up and putting it back together for them so that becomes frustrating as well because it does say on the box here uh, four and up, and I can almost assure you that a four-year-old is, uh, is not going to be able to put this whole thing back together very well uh, themselves. So, let me just uh, show you real quick how, how I solved the problem. There is the gyrosphere put back together. The uh, two black arrows there lined up. So uh, it is kind of locked together, but it's just not locked together 
good enough and it, and it will come apart fairly easily when it bumps into something and it will progressively come apart more and more easily as you keep taking it apart and putting it back together and kind of wearing down the uh, edges of that uh, rim right there where the two halves come together and there's not as much friction. So the way I saw that with, was with just a little bit of scotch tape. Took a small piece of tape and put it over here and another piece just kind of like on the opposite side, just those two pieces. And uh, you could probably get by probably with even smaller pieces of tape. You know, it, it looks like it takes away from the aesthetics of the overall toy, but when you're running it along the floor or carpet or whatever, you can't see that tape, so it really doesn't spoil it. If, uh, if the child enjoys taking the two halves apart and putting a different action figure in there and putting it back together again and then taking it apart just, you know, a minute and a half later and putting another action figure in there or acting like the action figure comes out of the uh, gyrosphere and runs across the floor like it's escaping from a dinosaur or something and they're, you know, playing out, you know, some type of a fantasy, their game or something. Well, they're not going to be able to do that now because this tape... Um, is not easy uh, to remove. You can remove it, you know, in about uh, 15 seconds, but it's not the same as just unscrewing the uh, top and pulling it out and pulling the action figure out of there and then putting the action figure back in and screwing the top back on and off you go. So there is that trade-off of having a uh, uh, fairly durable toy here that can bump into just about anything all day long and never come apart compared to having that uh, kind of role-playing uh, capability uh, to uh, have the figure come out of there and go back in during the playing session. So you kind of have to decide uh, what you, you want to do. I tried trying other ways to increase the friction there and nothing really seemed to work. I also tried using different types of tape that would be easier to remove um, than this uh, scotch tape, but uh, they didn't work very well either. So you can experiment with different ways too of keeping those two halves together. But until you solve that problem, uh, the child's probably going to be pretty frustrated with this toy. And, uh, and it could start happening the same day that you buy it. Because like I said, it, uh, it started happening the same day that, that we bought it and continued to progress to get worse and worse. But it is a good toy. It's a lot of fun to use. Um, it's well uh, engineered as far as that inside mechanism. It's just this way the two halves fit together uh, does have a little bit of a... Uh, design flaw in the fact that uh, they just they just don't stay together the way I think the uh, designers intended them uh, to do. Maybe they just never intended it to ever bump into something or slam into something or for the child to drop it on the floor or something, but that's the way children are. So yeah, that's just a fact of life. It has to be more durable than uh, not being able to take a hit like I showed you. And, uh, and I'm going to show you right now just how durable uh, it has become. So here is the gyrosphere, all set to go with the uh, piece of tape on it there, two pieces of tape. We'll just uh, run it around the room here a little bit. And as you can see, it's um, pretty durable there as far as uh, not coming apart with just a small, small whack. I let my grandson play with it for quite a while and he didn't seem to uh, have any problem at all uh, with the fact that you could not take the action figure out of there real easy. I think that is something that the children like when they first get it. Uh, afterwards, I think they just enjoy playing with it more like this, which is really how it is designed to be used without it coming apart, which again is uh, fairly frustrating. So, um, I would declare that it is all fixed here. Just two little pieces of tape solved that problem. And uh, as I said earlier, it is a very good toy. Pretty much lives up to how it's advertised and uh, should provide hours and hours of fun with just that very small fix.